Um, since the end of 90, uh, 1980s, in Europe, we started with the, what we call frame program. The first uh, uh, guy that he was starting with uh, this idea was uh, the former Italian Minister of Education that was a professor and rector at University La Sapienza in Rome, and the name is uh, Professor Ruberti. At that time, <coughs> Professor Ruberti uh, was uh, thinking that uh, Europe, uh, uh, in order to become uh, really one country, had uh, the necessity to have uh, something that was uh, like uh, a glue for that. In the past, what they had before was a coal. The coal, maybe you remember, that the coal and steel were the first uh, to link in Europe. But it was uh, not anymore enough. At that time, uh, we were thinking to have uh, one uh, European job market. And uh, in order to get uh, good people for the future of Europe, we needed to have uh, two major basement, education and research. And the idea of Professor Ruberti was uh, to put together, at, at that time, uh, uh, something more than 10 countries. Today, we have uh, 28 countries with a very different background, very different uh, history, very different uh, size and level of economy. This is, was uh, almost impossible. But the idea that was a great idea was becoming, year by year, more and more a part uh, of the growing of Europe. We have a guest here coming from different countries, from different parts of the world. Thank you, Professor, from Japan and uh, from other countries too. But uh, <coughs> what I want to say is that uh, Europe, Europe is a unique place where without any war, in peace, we, we, we have been able just to set up uh, one only currency. Today we talk about uh, Euro. Euro is uh, something really exceptional because uh, with 28 different economy with the different rules was, was possible to have uh, only one currency. It's not easy. Today we face the, cra the crisis. We face the difference between North and South of Europe. We face the difference between countries and countries. But in addition to that, we have another important currency that is a one virtual currency that is the possibility for students <coughs> to move from one country to the other one through one program that we call Erasmus. And this Erasmus program is uh, the best program of Europe. The Erasmus started uh, 23 years ago. In the beginning was uh, like a dream. I remember that uh, I was back from US in 1989, uh, just in the beginning, and uh, in my department, uh, we set up uh, the first committee for the, well, at that time, uh, the name was a Socrates program. And it was very difficult, because the idea on the back uh, was uh, to have uh, a virtual currency for education. Something like Europe, but uh, is it not, uh, you cannot touch it with your hands. And uh, this uh, virtual, Currency for Education, the name is uh, European Credit Transfer System, ECTS. What means? Means uh, that uh, if you are an Italian student and you want to spend uh, a year in the uh, UK, you can go there. And uh, before that you move from Italy to Imperial College, for example, the two institutions sign an agreement and uh, when uh, you arrive in London, you are sure that uh, the credit that uh, you can get from Imperial College will be a part of your curricula in Italy. Very simple to say, very difficult to put in, in place because we, today in Europe we have a 28 different <coughs> education system, but we have uh, now millions and millions of young European, they had uh, this great experience to spend a part of their life in one country to go back to their home country and to get uh, one possibility to get a degree. And this was a, a big push <coughs> from the job uh, European market. 
the companies were saying, oh, look, we needed to have a European, not anymore Italian, British, French. We needed to have a people, they, they grow up in this spirit, the spirit of Europe. Today we have more than 500 million European inhabitants in all the 28 countries, and the job market is really more and more European, and we need to have this European education. But this is not enough. It's not enough because uh, today there is the necessity not only to have a part of your curricula in a different country, in a different education system, but uh, to have a degree that uh, is recognized by two or three or more institutions. And this is another step. Why? Because if you have a part of your curricula, you don't have uh, the complete accreditation of your degree. And the job market today requires quality and insurance. This means accredited your degree. It's very simple to say, very difficult to put in place. In which way we do in Europe? We do that uh, the students, they can spend <coughs> a part of their uh, education time in two different countries. For example, if you have a two years degree, like a master degree, you spend 50% of your time uh, maybe in Germany and 50% uh, in Bulgaria. But what we need uh, is not only the recognition of your credits in one university from the other and vice versa, but to have also a complete design of your curricula. This means that uh, we need to have a coherence in the, de <coughs> in the design of the part of the curricula in Germany and in Bulgaria. This is another step, this is a step, a very important step, back, uh, because uh, at this level means that uh, you really integrate the knowledge of the different countries. Not only a spot, Erasmus is really a virtual <coughs> currency for education, but it's a spot currency because you can get uh, some degrees there, <coughs> some credits there, and some other credits there, but uh, sometimes there is no a complete design of the curricula. For the double degree, this is uh, possible. This means that uh, you need, uh, since the beginning, to have uh, the, the two institutions, they sit around the table, like uh, we are going to do tonight for this uh, <coughs> diplomas, cultural diplomacy master, in order to design one path for the students with uh, one final aim, to have uh, the knowledge that uh, is becoming from the best part of the two countries. But there is another farther step that there is a, we called, uh, we <coughs> for now, we, we, we are thinking to have a double degree. What means double degree? Means that uh, at the end of uh, your uh, pass for the education, you get uh, one degree from one university and the second degree from the other university. This is a double. The final aim is uh, to have uh, one degree that uh, is signed by the two institutions. This is much more difficult because uh, <coughs> if you have a double degree, the two degrees, they have uh, to be recognized by the two institutions, but uh, not the two states. Because in most of the countries in Europe, we have autonomy for the university. This means that the university are autonomous in order to define the curriculum and to design that. That the final, will be to have uh, one only, uh, only one paper at the end uh, with the two signatures. And this is only part of the story, but this, this part of the story is uh, in Horizon 2020. Horizon 2020 is uh, in terms of uh, total resources, means 77 billion euro for the next seven years. This, this, this uh, resources are coming from where? Are coming from the pockets of the 500 million habitants in Europe. This is a part of the economy of each country. And uh, in which percentage the country participate? Participate in a percentage that is related to the 
to the GDP of the country related to the GDP of Europe. For example, Italy is 14%. This means that uh, we have to put in this big, uh, big money 14% in terms of uh, euro. And wha wha what, what is in the back of this? That uh, having all these resources together, we needed to design projects where we have the participation of uh, at least uh, three different countries of Europe. This means that uh, the researchers, they have uh, to work together maybe for 24 or 36 months in different, uh, in different fields with uh, one aim. And the aim is to improve the research level in Europe. You understand the point. The point is, uh, first of all, we have uh, a one uh, unique system for the education in Europe. Second, we need also to have uh, the next step. This means uh, the research, common research. Then uh, in, uh, in the, this last uh, uh, 33, 34 years, we started from uh, the framework, first, first framework. The Horizon 2020 is uh, the eighth framework program. In the past, uh, the framework was uh, lasting for five years. Now we say, oh, five years maybe is too short. We need it seven years. And uh, we are going to start in 2014 up to 2020. And uh, what is the final aim? The final aim is uh, very, very strong in the sense that uh, the idea is that uh, the improvement of the quality of life in Europe, the quality of employment in Europe, the quality of job in Europe is tightly related to the level of research in Europe. This means that uh, they select some fields, for, for example, life sciences or energy or telecommunication or water or climate change. These are some of the big topics for this common research. Common research that uh, is the real life for the future of Europe. And uh, we are in big crisis in this time. You know, most of our countries, they cut the, funded, the funding for research and for university. Europe uh, is going to another direction. For the seven framework that uh, will finish uh, in December 2013, uh, three months from now, the total investment was uh, 50 million. For the eighth framework will be 77 million. And uh, we hope that uh, during this uh, seven year, this money, this resource will be increased by another maybe 10 million. Then the final aim is uh, to go to this direction. But it's not enough. Uh, as I said, the basic uh, to have uh, this uh, that we call uh, European research area and uh, European research education. This means to have uh, only one land in Europe and to have uh, in this land European research and European education. But the world is changing, it's changing, and uh, we feel that uh, Europe is not anymore enough. And now, since uh, the Horizon 2020, we are launching in stronger way than in the past, uh, what we call Erasmus Mundus. Erasmus Mundus uh, is uh, an improvement of the Erasmus program, where can participate not only European citizen, European young, European students, but they can parci participate, students, young people from all around the world. And this is another big step because you understand that uh, we can uh, really build a world, a peaceful world for the future only if we start from a young people. In which way we'll work? We'll work that uh, for the students, will be available fellowships. 
if <coughs> there is a, the, I'm sure that uh, the competition will be very hard. But uh, in the meantime, if you are a good student, if you can get this fellowship, then you can decide where to go to use your fellowship in any country in Europe. This is the best way, really, to create connection for the future. The last point. We saw that uh, we have had education at the European level, research at the European level, education that could cross also overseas. But what could be the relation between education and society, education and companies? You know, one of the more difficult transitions for the students is from school to a company. Then uh, in the frame of Erasmus program, <coughs> in the seven frames, we had uh, some uh, s very small uh, example for that. But uh, during the Horizon 2020, we are going to have uh, more and more activities on this. What uh, we call the Erasmus for internship. This means uh, that uh, in your education, you can also insert one six months or one year where you can spend your time in a company in another country that is related to the guest university where you spent a part of your education. This means that the life is becoming more and more interesting. You are a student born maybe in Italy and you will have the possibility to have a part of your education in a different country and then uh, you can connect uh, to your education when an uh, internship might be in a third country. And we have uh, to remember that uh, this interesting design is not for the languages. Languages are important, but more important is the culture. And we have uh, to remember that uh, the best friends of our life are the friends uh, from the schools. And uh, maybe in a few years from now, you, you can think back about my words and you remember some of your friends during your stay for the Erasmus program in a different country. This morning, one lady was uh, coming to the airport and was saying, oh, I can speak Italian. And I was uh, for six months uh, in Torino, in my hometown. Then, uh, you know, this is a real Europe. And uh, she's coming maybe from another country and this is, this is the real European spirit, the spirit for the future. The last, what I want to say that uh, uh, Europe uh, is is difficult time for Europe. Not in general, but there are countries like my countries, like Greece, like Portugal, like Spain, where the, the situation is difficult. But if you look, Europe in total, why is it difficult for our countries? There is uh, one big issue that uh, is the unemployed rate. And uh, in my country, we have, a, as an average, 12%. But for the young people, is uh, as an average, uh, 30%. In the south of Italy, it's more than 40%. And this is uh, very bad, very, very bad. But if we look at Europe in total, Total is different because there are countries like uh, this country where they need uh, graduates, they need people who come to work here. And this is another point. When I was student, I was student in Torino, but I was born in another part of Italy. And at that time, uh, a, a great number of students in my class, they were coming from the south of Italy, for example. And one of the reasons was the, the the reputation of the school, that is very important. But the second reason was uh, the possibility to get a job at the, the end of the degree. And for them it was difficult, maybe they had the possibility to go back home once a year, it was expensive. I remember that uh, usually they move from Torino to the south on the 8th of December for Christmas vacation. For most of them it was more than 24 hours uh, a trip uh, by train, and today in Europe you can move from one country to the other in one hour. 
uh, with less than 100 euro. This morning we were moving from uh, Rome, was uh, 9.45, 10 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock we were in Berlin, 12.15 we were here, yes. Then the constraints are completely changed and uh, this is the reason that uh, Europe is looking for the future. Uh, Europe is, is able, or it was able to design a society for the future with the people that uh, were not anymore Italian, German, French, but real European citizen. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Profumo, for an excellent and thought-provoking lecture. Now uh, is uh, the, the second part, uh, which is just as important, the questions and comments. So please don't hesitate. And as always, if you could stand and briefly introduce yourself. We'll start in the back, and then we'll come to the front. Um, I'm David Groot, originally from uh, the Netherlands, Maastricht. Now, uh, OICO student in Freiburg, Basel, and Strasbourg. It's a triple master degree. I think uh, three separate ones as well. Um, however, I noticed uh, in my studies, so first in Maastricht, the, um, uh, there you had blocks of seven weeks, eight weeks, then you had exams in two uh, subjects, and you went on to the next block of seven weeks. In France, you have courses which go over the entire year. Um, and in the end of the year, you have got one exam, no uh, chance of on reset. In uh, Germany, you have uh, semesters of half a year. And in Switzerland, it's also with semesters, but they start on a different time. Do you think, uh, uh, well, if you have to do all uh, three simultaneously, it's pretty hard and complicated. Do you think it will ever be more harmonized? <coughs> uh, do you know that the uh, US uh, is only one country? It's very difficult to transfer your credits uh, from one university to another one. In Europe, uh, we have uh, 28 countries with uh, 28 uh, different uh, history. And uh, we are able to have a student that is following in three different universities one degree. At the, the end, uh, he will have uh, three degrees. This is a really uh, modern way to design uh, the future of a student and maybe to design a future of uh, a person. I was born uh, when uh, the <coughs> our life was uh, set up in a, like an industrial system. We had uh, 13 years of uh, schools before university, five years of schools for university, then uh, years, uh, maybe 40 years uh, for working, than pension. For the future will be something very different. I'm sure that uh, we, the, for the student, the young, they will go to the school maybe five or six times. They will go in a different country. They will work uh, in a different way. They, they needed to maybe any time to start from scratch because different uh, habits, different uh, relation, different. Then uh, I am in favor to say that uh, in Europe uh, we needed to keep the difference. We needed to keep, because uh, if we want to have uh, an homogeneous country with the 500 uh, uh, million people, with the 28 <coughs> different history, I'm sure that uh, we will fail, like the other big part of the, of the world. Thank you very much for your speech. It was very interesting. My name is Anastasia. I'm originally from Ukraine, but as long as I'm taking MA in Poland, I had a, an opportunity to um, want to Erasmus, Erasmus placement. And due to this, I'm right, right now I'm in Berlin. And Erasmus uh, exchange in Spain, which I'm really grateful for that. Uh, my question is, um, right now, uh, from what I've heard and what I know, Erasmus got um, a reputation of uh, some kind of uh, vacation uh, kind of thing with a, a lot of parties for the students. How do you deal with this thing? How do you, uh, do you do something in this field? Do you know about this problem? <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. 
uh, Erasmus and before Socrates was designed for university system. In the meantime, uh, also related to the crisis that we have, we need also to start to think about uh, as Erasmus-like, I don't know, for the future, maybe the name will be different for the vo vocational studies. Uh, it's much more difficult because uh, in each country we have a different system, but we have also different law. And this means that uh, uh, f to, m to, to set up uh, a vocational study in uh, one uh, Erasmus-like uh, program, we need uh, first to work at the uh, uh, country level in order to, to have a more homogeneous uh, system and law for, for, the, for, the, for the work. Um, in, the, in the commission there is a, a group that is working on this field. Uh, I hope they can solve because it is a really an important issue. And for some countries, like uh, my country for example, that the situation is not uh, really clear and we don't know yet what could happen for the future. Then I hope that the next big pro program for Europe uh, will be in, uh, in the vocational studies frame because this is the important part for the development of this part of the world. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Francesco, for this clear description of the goal for uh, like Erasmus. I have two short questions. My name is uh, Badr Abdeslam and I'm from Morocco. I study here at ICD for a master's program. And uh, to, uh, my first question with regard to the uh, outcome of this project, which is uh, like you're f uh, like looking forward to. And I don't know, by the way, I don't know if the, uh, uh, the European uh, Education Commission like reached the, the goal of like reaching one million signature by November 2013 in order to get the rise of the budget uh, that they are, because uh, they are like uh, uh, targeting 3% rise of the budget for uh, uh, budgeting the, uh, the future uh, Erasmus program. So my question is, to what extent this project is going to facilitate access to the job market? Because you talked about how is it going to help student mobility and having like double or like triple degrees, but like I would like to hear how is that going to help students because by the end people go to get education in order to get to the job market and Europe now suffering, especially youth in Europe are suffering from this problem. That's one thing. The other thing is, don't you think that education now has become, ha has become a burden on the shoulder, not only of students, but families? I'm sure in your generation, when you went to school, probably you went for free. I don't know how much it cost your family to go to school. But now nowadays, uh, families are working to get their children to school, not to go to school in order to get money, but now people are like trying to work hard to get their children to go to school. So can you please tell us how, within the framework of cultural diplomacy, how can we design an educational system which is the other way around? We generate profit for families, not like make it a burden on their shoulder. And thank you. <coughs> Related to the first question, um, as I said uh, in the past, uh, we had uh, some kind of uh, industrial model for, uh, for our life. And this industrial model was uh, in some way related to, to the different countries. <coughs> Today, the globalization is mainly for the education and uh, for the jobs. This means that only if you have a, s a certain type of uh, background, maybe in the future, you will have the possibility to get a good job in a part of the world. I don't know where. But uh, today, the connectivity, physical and intangible, is so different related to the past that you need to have uh, this kind of background. In your case, uh, you come from Morocco. Maybe you, you, you did a part of your study in Morocco. Now you're in Germany. 
maybe today you speak also German, <coughs> in the future <coughs> you can get a, a job in another country. You know, you are becoming a real uh, global man. And this is, a, this is a great idea. This means that uh, for the future you, you can move not only as a blue collet. Uh, my father generation, we had uh, so many immigrants from Italy, but most of these people were blue collets, people that uh, they were looking for just a job. For our generation, for your generation, you can be <coughs> not uh, looking for a job uh, as a blue collet, but like an intellectual man. And maybe in the, in the life uh, you can change several countries where you will have a more opportunity also to contribute to the country. <coughs> and Europe uh, is becoming more and more one country from this point of view. If you look in Germany in this time, uh, they are looking for uh, people who are very well educated, with a PhD, with a master, because they need this. And they understood that uh, uh, this is a, a great opportunity for the country, but also for Europe. Then my <coughs> final thought is uh, that uh, the constraints today are completely different uh, if we compare wi with the, in the, in the what happened 20 years ago. And the people, young people, are much more flexible, are much more able to do what uh, we did uh, just uh, as an elite. In my generation, <coughs> was good to go to study to Berkeley, to Stanford, to MIT in the <coughs> West Side. Today, uh, my children, they look uh, China, they look Japan, they look Singapore. You know, the, the world is really a small world because the, there, is a so many, there are so many possibilities, really, to be connected, to move to, then uh, is something is very attractive for the future. I don't feel that it's bad. In the past, immigration was something difficult. Today, to go to another place is not uh, really to be an immigrant. You are s someone that is moving with his knowledge. That is uh, something different from the past. For the second question, second question <coughs> is very difficult, but we need <coughs> to face uh, uh, for sure one uh, one problem. If you look at my country, my country is uh, the second oldest country in terms of uh, age. The first one is Japan, the second one, and. Uh, for for a country like Italy, uh, we 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 and uh, Italy is not uh, for sure a growing country. We don't have too many resources. We have about uh, 60 million, but the number of active employees, this means people that uh, they can uh, uh, really contribute to the country, is a small number, because uh, we have a pension pension of people and we needed to take care of these guys. But uh, if you increase also the average age, you have a more problem from the health problem. From it. In the meantime, uh, you needed to, to, have, uh, uh, to invest for the future. This means invest in education for, uh, for the future. I have the thinking, and uh, this is what I did in my life, uh, that uh, the state has uh, to provide education, has uh, to provide education for people that they come from family with uh, no resources. In the meantime, I feel that uh, if you can contribute, you need to contribute to yourself. Uh, it's, it's normal, for example, in my country, to have a lease for buying a house. But uh, sometimes, uh, from an uh, ideological point of view, they say, if you get a loan for your study, it's not good. Why? If you think that it's good to have a loan for the, for the house for your future, why is not uh, good to get a loan for the best investment that uh, your family and yourself you can do for your future? This means education. Then I have uh, the feeling that uh, we needed to face uh, the general problem 
And the general problem is that the average of people is increasing. This means that the number of people that we need uh, in some way to do support in some way is, is increasing. In the meantime, uh, we need to take care for the best part of, of the society that they are the young, but uh, we cannot uh, do for everyone. We need to s maybe to select and to help the people that they need more. For the other, maybe they can help in some part through the family or through themselves. We need uh, really to change again a model. The, the static model that it was in my generation maybe is not anymore possible. Just to give you an idea, when I, I was studying my university, we had uh, 1,200 uh, uh, freshmen students every year. Today we have uh, the same school, but we have uh, 8,000. You know, it's a great result, but in some way you, you need to face uh, this problem. <coughs> My name is Mamadou Kone, uh, originally from Mali, uh, living in Austria. Um, my question is linked, really linked to his question, because this is the biggest concern of the young, young, pe young people in Europe. Um, if I paraphrase your explanation, it tends to be like young people will give you the possibility to study, you have to pay, and it's up to you now to find a way by yourself. This is the way I try to paraphrase it. Now, let's put it the other way around. The creativity the Commission, the European single country have done to put into practice this huge program of Erasmus, why not take an active approach to give possibility to young people with all the knowledge they have to for a, an insertion in the society, in active society. Because if you just look at the amount of money invest in the mobility, which is a great thing, of course, but after having the diploma, what is the feedback now? And look at the case in Greece, in Italy, in Portugal, in Spain. It's generating. Or if you could tell us, is there a failure of approach or continuity between education and real life, social life activities? <laughs> Maybe we need uh, a few days uh, to answer to your question. If you look at the big crisis, we start the crisis in the year 2007, in the beginning, and 2008, and today we are in the year 2013. It's not a worldwide crisis. If we look in these uh, seven years, in reality, in the whole world, we don't have a crisis. We have a crisis, big crisis, in some part of the world. Not everywhere. This is uh, one point that we need to face. This means that uh, maybe, I, I'm coming from a country where mobility is very difficult. In my generation, was uh, almost uh, normal to go to the university in the same town or in the same region where you were, wor uh, where you were, uh, you were born, uh, where you studied before. You know, this is was the situation. Then we start to say, oh, maybe we need to, to go to the university in the best university. And this means uh, to move from one place to the other one in Italy and it was related uh, in some way good university and possibility of future job. For example, north of Italy was like this. Today, people, they move to Europe, in Europe. For the future, maybe they move to another countries, to other countries. Because if you look this part of the world, it's not really has the possibility to give the jobs to everyone. Because uh, as I said before, 
the, 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 the average age is increasing in this part of the world. This means that these people, the people, uh, the active people is reduced. These people, they need uh, something less. The, uh, anyhow, the model of this society is still similar what we had before. It's not changed yet. And it's not easy to change uh, in a short time. You are you're saying why European uh, Commission is investing in mobility and not uh, investing in uh, education, basic education? People, people want, they are educated, but they want yeah. to have a job, to have a decent life. Yeah, but uh, yes, you're right. But uh, create a job in artificial ways means nothing. We needed to create a job because uh, there is a demand for job. We had in, the, in Italy for a long time thinking that it was necessary to create jobs. But then these jobs cannot survive. Then I have the feeling that we needed to create different jobs since the past. What we are losing in this crisis in, crisis in terms of job, I'm sure that we cannot get anymore. I'm coming from a, a, a city that is Torino. Torino is uh, the car town in Italy. When I was a student, as I said, I'm not from this area. I came from another area. In the Torino city, we had uh, 70,000 people working for Fiat directly. And five times more, this means uh, 350,000, working around Fiat Group. Today, we have less than 10,000 people in total. And the number of uh, uh, automobiles that are produced every year is maybe three times or four times than before. Because the model is changing completely. It's changing the, the factory, it's changing the automation in the factory, it's changing the way we're... You know, we, we needed to understand that, that the world is changing really. And the, what c could be for the future is uh, to have a, a different model of society. Maybe this is the way to create uh, new jobs. But uh, if we wanted to create a job, uh, in, in the frame that it was in the last uh, 50 years. Maybe it's not anymore. Look, uh, uh, what, what there is a, a strong attention by the, the European Commission to what they call social innovation. What means social innovation? means uh, that uh, each euro that uh, is invested in innovation that uh, can also be not uh, technical innovation, can be innovation in, term, in large term, is uh, on demand of uh, social issues. This is an important. And you know, for the first time, in parallel to this Horizon 2020, uh, Europe launched another seven years pro program, and they call cohesion funds. And uh, these funds are 10 times, no, six times more than uh, the, the resources for the Horizon 2020. And 50% of these cohesion funds, they will be dedicated to what we are looking for. This means for social innovation. How to create uh, jobs, how to create a structure, how to create a system, how to create a new society, starting from uh, the social issue. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to add a little bit to the previous question because I think it is very important for all the youth in Europe. Um, have you ever, um, like in most of cases, uh, y um, young people cannot find the job because they don't have um, enough um, experience, working experience, because we are studying all the time and we have the opportunity to take the internship uh, to get the, the funds to take the internship only once. It's either Erasmus or 
Leonardo da Vinci program, is, if I'm not mistaken. And my question is, um, is there any project to launch more um, uh, scholarships to take an internship? Again, I think the, the world has changed. We cannot have a fellowship for everything. You know, it was a big fight just uh, to try to increase uh, from 50 to 70, 70 billion, 77 billion. It's in this time uh, where everything uh, is in difficulties. To get 50% um, more related to the previous one was a great uh, success. This is the point. What could be, what we needed to force uh, is that uh, the company they have to pay the company, because uh, if they are serious and they get a student for six months, the, the, the internship cannot be too short, because in this, if it's too short, uh, it's, it's not uh, a, a winner game for, for the company, for the students. But if you do your internship in a company, the company, they pay for you. This is the way. We cannot wait always the state, the state or the Europe. It's not possible anymore. I think. Uh, each people, each person, each company has to contribute and not to wait and not to always wait for someone that is, is doing for them. Then this is what is, is really the good way to do. You do your job for a company and uh, you, you, you will have a smaller salary because you, you, your expertise is not complete yet, but this is the, the real. Because if the company is paying some salary, I'm sure that the final result uh, will be much better because uh, you get some money and you are more interested in your job and the company will be more interested that you can get a good results at the end. <laughs>